Hello and welcome to another Kill la Kill If video today. We've got a character breakdown for Satsuki. Satsuki is a very beginner friendly character for she is very good in many different areas of the game. She's a fast and nimble character with quick sword slashes and some amazing fast projectiles that make her a threat from a distance as well. So let's start this breakdown by talking about some of her normals. First we've got her close range attack. It's fairly standard, the first attack has a bit of short range so you need to be pretty close to catch your opponent. Tilting the left stick vertically gives you an uppercut anti-air starter and if you keep it tilted that way it ends with another uppercut that takes the opponent into the air where you can start your own aerial combo. Tilting the left stick horizontally gives you this horizontal slash, which is great for catching sidesteps, and if you end a combo with the horizontal attack, it ends in the cinematic flurry of attacks that gives you a ton of meter. And at the end of it, you can unleash Satsuki's special ranged attack, which we'll talk about later in the video. Satsuki's aerial combo is really good. Just mashing the attack button brings Satsuki back down to the ground, where she can throw her close range and long range supers. So it ends up being a very powerful tool for finishing combos. In addition to that, the third hit of her aerial combo bounces the opponent off the ground, giving you enough time to land and throw her guard break super, which is much slower, but keep this in mind, because sometimes you'll need that special to extend some combos. You'll see why when we talk about the special attacks. All of these attacks we just mentioned, the neutral close range attack, the vertical, the horizontal, and the jumping attacks, all of them get a damage buff once you get one Valor, so she becomes even more devastating. Moving on to her long range attacks, Satsuki has some strong zoning with fast projectiles. However, a lot of them have low priority, so they can be dash through. That means you can't overuse them, or you'll become easy to counter. She's got four projectiles and both the third and the fourth can cause a wall splat, which gives you an opportunity to dash in and extend a combo pretty easily. If you hold down the projectile button, you'll get an even bigger projectile. This one is very fast, very hard to dodge, so your opponent will most likely try to block it. And it has a bigger priority, so they can't dash through it. If you have the time to charge it, it can definitely oppress your enemies. This one can be jumped over, but because you can change the timing of when you launch it, that's not an easy thing to do. Because you don't have to charge this attack the whole way for it to come out fast and dangerous. You can just charge it a little bit and release the button. So timing the jump to counter this projectile might just very well be impossible if you're playing a good enough Satsuki. In the air, her projectiles work very similarly. She only has three fast projectiles instead of four, but the third one can still wall splat. And then if you charge it, it becomes a completely different thing. Satsuki will swing her sword in the air and after a while, two projectiles will be launched towards your opponent. If you pull this off, you can get some crazy pressure because if the opponent blocks, you got time to get in there and hit them with a guard break. These projectiles are fairly easy to dodge though, side steps or even forward steps will avoid them completely, sometimes just running around avoids them. And if you commit to the pressure, your opponent can just dodge them by dashing at you, so be ready to punish that homing dash. If you use this close to your opponent, you'll hit them with your sword first, before the projectiles even show up, like a close range attack, but that's not really what this attack is for. If your opponent gets hit by these attacks, then you can pull off some crazy combo starters that deal insane damage. That's a bit situational, but do you keep it in mind, because you will just melt your opponent's health bar. Moving on to her guard break, Satsuki's grounded guard break is a horizontal slash that catches sidestepping opponents. Most guard breaks in this game can be dodged with a sidestep, so the player actively has to fight their own muscle memory when reacting to Satsuki's guard break. Backstepping works sometimes, depending on how close Satsuki is, and jumping can also dodge it. However, if it catches an opponent, Satsuki can follow it up with an aerial attack. So the reward isn't really a full combo, but it's still pretty solid, given that Satsuki can throw special moves after finishing her aerial combos. In the air, her guard break is this dive animation, which cannot be backstepped, but has to be sidestepped instead. It has deceivingly long reach, as you don't have to catch your opponent with your sword, you can catch them with the projectile that comes out of it. And if it opens up, your opponent to follow up is a grounded combo, so you can use this as a combo opener, and it's also a great combo extension after wall splats. Finally, we have her dash attacks, where you use your homing dash and then press a button to attack. Her close range attack button is fairly standard, Satsuki throws a flurry of attacks making it easy to see if you hit your opponent or if they're blocking and then confirming into a combo or a mix-up. The long range attack is so good. After the dash, Satsuki jumps and throws a projectile and because she can keep her distance, this catches attempts to punish your dash, catches uppercuts or bloody valor attempts. And if you're close to a wall, it can cause a wall splat, making it a really good option for Satsuki. And finally, the guard break button is a lunge attack. Satsuki travels forward quite a bit, so you can start this from quite a distance. Moving on to our special attacks, first up we have Fi. 
here. Satsuki slices her blade three times at close range and if it connects, a cinematic attack will occur. This special ends combos, there's nothing you can do from here, but it is very good damage which makes it a great combo finisher. When you get two Valor, this special becomes her super called Surrender. The activation is the same but it has a different cinematic and significantly more damage. Next we have her long range special called Contradiction. It's a big projectile that can be launched from the ground or the air. And in this game, aerial special moves aren't that common, so this is quite special. This move can also cause a wall bounce, making it a great combo extender, and you should have no trouble following it up if you're close to that wall. From further away, it might be a bit too tight, since Satsuki takes a while to recover from this animation. It might not even be possible to dash in and keep comboing, depending on the distance. But you can still throw Satsuki's fast projectiles for a bit of extra damage when the distance is too big. Her last special is Subjugation, which is an unblockable attack, since it's her guard break special. It's got a very close activation, and if it connects, it blows the opponent far and causes a big wall splat, assuming you're close enough to a wall. Not only is it an amazing tool for getting through an opponent's block, it's also a great ability to put in combos. In those situations where using ranged special attacks would leave you too far away from the wall, this move blows the opponent further away and the follow-up is much easier. Plus, it deals more damage than the ranged special, but the problem is you can't just put this anywhere you want. You gotta use that third attack of the jumping combo, which means you're giving up the damage of that last hit. So whenever possible to extend combos, go for the full aerial combo into the ranged special. But if you're a bit further away from the wall, the guard break special might be your best choice. Plus, it looks cool as hell. And finally, we have our secret art, Senyi Soshitsu, which just wins you the match. In a combo, you can put this at the very end of your aerial string, so it will connect very, very easily. <laughs> And now that we know her abilities, here are some tips on how to use Satsuki. Satsuki is a wonderful character for beginners. As you could probably tell by now, she's got very fast attacks, allowing you to unleash fast punishment on an opponent's mistake. And she's also got decent zoning with her fast projectiles. Her guard break will mess with your opponent's muscle memory and force them to stay on their feet. Because if you do the grounded one, they either have to jump or backstep, but if you do the aerial one, sidestepping is their only choice. Plus, you can trick them by putting your guard break in a block string, because after three attacks, your grounded guard break changes to one that can't be jumped over or backstepped. So getting through someone's guard with Satsuki isn't that hard, making her a great character to play from close range. And even from long range, she's an above average zoner. There are characters in the game with better zoning, but they lack Satsuki's close range game, and that's part of why Satsuki is such a complete character. Her fast projectiles keep her opponents in check. If someone has the habit of dashing through your projectiles, you can bait them by throwing maybe one or two projectiles and then just stopping, which means you can then punish their homing dash. And if the projectiles hit them, there's a good chance you'll get a wall splat from where you can just dash in and unleash your best combo. For maximum damage, you should open your combos with her jumping guard cancel. That allows you to follow up with a dash into a ground combo, but of course, you don't always have the chance to open a combo with a guard break. Heck, the optimal combo starter is with a charged projectile into a jumping guard cancel. But that's very impractical. Not impossible, just extremely hard to pull off. After you start the grounded combo, you can tilt the stick horizontally if you just want to get more meter. Or if you're going for damage, tilt it vertically, go into the air and bring them back down, finishing things with a special attack or bloody valor. Getting valor with Satsuki is nice, but I wouldn't say it's mandatory or that it should be a priority. With level 1, her close range attacks become more powerful, and with level 2, her close range special attack becomes a super, which are nice improvements to the character, it basically means she can deal more damage, but they don't change the character in a significant way. Which at the end of the day just means that you're free to spend your meter however you want. If you'd rather go for special attacks while you're at zero valor, you don't have to feel bad about yourself for spending the meter that way. So I won't tell you what to do, you, you just do you, you choose the best option, but what I'll say is, you need at least one Valor to pull this one off.
Touch of Death combos have been somewhat controversial. The community hasn't received them particularly well, but bear in mind that if you have two bars of meter, you'll be able to break out of any combo, and you will definitely build those two bars of meter over the course of this huge combo. So this won't kill you in a real match because you'll be able to break out of it. However, I still find these combos a good tool for practicing. They allow you to get to know your character better, know what combo routes work and which ones don't. And if you land something like this in a match, you're practically forcing your opponent to use their meter defensively. Plus, no matter what people say, Nothing beats the swag of a good old TOD. Thank you for watching another character breakdown for Kill La Kill If. Who would you like to see next? Let me know in those comments down below. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you very much for watching. My name is Globku, and I'll see you guys next time. Boy.